This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so this is the common session, uh, MM and ST. The reason is there are some enterprise structure components, objects which are common in both, for example, plant, for example, storage location. Okay, so there will be few sessions which will be having common between MM and SD. Once we are done with the common sessions, then we will bifurcate and then again we will go to the MM related processes and SD related processes. So the enterprise structure uh, plus the master data part, which is material master and uh, customer vendor master data, this all we will be doing together. Once that is done, once we go through the processes, sales processes and purchasing processes, we will get bifurcated once again. Okay, so in our last session, what we discussed is we discussed the high level enterprise structure where we understood. Do you, do you remember what are the different components in the enterprise structure? What are the first component? Client, client right? Client is the topmost after the client. Operating concern. Operating concern if we are using. Copa module. Copa module. Yes. Become if then, COPA is hmm. used. Yes. Controlling area. Controlling area, which is required from the internal reporting purpose. Hmm. Internal reporting means those reports which are uh, carried out by the business for internal uh, control. For example, uh, background noise, Nagesh. Uh, yeah, sorry. So for internal reporting purpose means the reports which you generate for internal purpose. For example, uh, at the legal entity level, at the company code level, if you are generating the profit and loss balance sheet, all the financial reports, those are at the legal entity level, which you need to report to the tax authorities, to the uh, auditors, to the uh, companies act right as per the different accounting principles ifrs you need to prepare those reports internally means the reports which are internal to your organization for example you want to know which product has given you more profit okay if you have multiple products let's assume uh, in this example what we are going to do today is we are considering reliance chemicals as our customer now within reliance chemicals let's say they have different plants okay they have the plant in mumbai they have the plant in pune bangalore hyderabad and they have different products for example they are dealing in fertilizers insecticides pesticides right so these are the different products which they are develop, which they are uh, manufacturing and they want to do the report based on these products or based on the locations so those location wise product wise information is only for the internal control that is the reason we normally create a controlling area for internal purpose. Okay, what comes after controlling area? Company code. Company code. Why is company code required? It's a this is for external, external mandated reporting. Reporting. Right. So internal reporting is optional which has to be done by your business up to you, whether you want to do it or not. But when it comes to the external reporting, this is mandatory. You need to submit your financial statements every month, every quarter, every year. And that is the reason you understand uh, that finance, most of the finance uh, related end users, they will always say that I'm busy with the month end reporting, quarter end reporting, year end reporting. That is the reason because those are the mandatory reports need to be submitted as per the timeline. Okay, so that is the company code and just remember company code equal to legal entity. Okay, legal entity means the companies which are registered. For example, Reliance Chemicals is a legal entity which is registered according to the Companies Act and we'll be creating Reliance Chemical as a company code in the system. Can I go ahead without company code? If I, let's assume I want to use only MM and SD module. Is it okay if I don't create a company code because that is a finance object? No, we need to have company code first. Company code is mandatory, right? Without company code, you will not be able to do anything in purchasing and sales also. The company code is a minimum requirement. That is the reason whenever you are working on the project, you first need to check 
the company code related setup with the finance and then only you can start working on even the configuration when you are doing whenever you are creating the plants purchasing organizations sales organizations everything has to be assigned to the company code so that they can start working right so the company code is mandatory even for mm and sd without company code you cannot start any of your transactions what comes after company code plant plants right the so plants are nothing but physical locations plants can be the uh, storing location storing location means wherever you are just it is kind of a warehouse it can be the manufacturing location where you are manufacturing something it can be the sales location from where you are doing the sales or even it can be the just the office where your team is sitting right so plant has no kind of definition that only the manufacturing facility can be created as a plant plant can be anything which is a separate location within your company right so normally if i think from the manufacturing point of view plant is nothing but my manufacturing location if i think from the purchasing point of view uh, or inventory point of view plant is nothing but my location where the material will be stored if i think from the sales point of view plant is nothing but the channel through which i'll be doing my sale right and if i think just coming out of logistics if i think from the normal point of view any location any physical office where the team is sitting even that can be considered as a plant is it necessary to create a plant uh, yes it is you if you want to use mm and sd then definitely it is mandatory if you are implementing sap only for the finance point of view you are not doing anything in mm you are not doing anything in sd then completely fine you can ignore the plant but if you are using mm and sd you cannot survive without the plant so plant is one of the very important functionality within mm sd pp pm there are a lot of modules that is the reason this is normally done at the cross application level okay it is not only done at the sales or purchase level it is done at the cross application level so it's a relative question correct if uh, this question asked to fi guy they will say no it's not mandatory and if it's asked to mm sd it will say yeah it's mandatory no it has to be answered carefully so if they are asking plant is mandatory so definitely you you can just tell whether it is a fi question or sd question you have to just tell if we are using mm and sd module then definitely plant is mandatory because we will not be able to do anything without plant so you know fi guys are also answering mm -hmm. even if ask you will be doing the same thing because uh, ultimately if mm and sd is being used then the plant is mandatory Correct. Okay. What comes under plant? Purchase organization, sales organization. But under company, na purchase organ sales or. Uh, what about the storage locations? Storage location is under plant. Correct. All right. Within the plant, you will be having different storage locations. okay so one plant may have multiple storage locations and then the other objects so this is a end to end like you can say the parent child relationship so client may have multiple operating concern one operating concern may have multiple controlling areas one controlling area may have multiple company codes one company code may have multiple plants and one plant may have multiple storage locations after this then comes this purchasing org and sales org so they are not directly one to one or one to n we have to understand how exactly the purchasing organization would be associated with company how the sales org will be associated to the company what kind of relations are there they will not follow the common relation that we have discussed here so purchasing org and sales org we need to discuss separately so if i'm talking about mm see maybe i'll divide this this is at the client level okay this is for co these are the co objects this is co module in co module we create operating concern and controlling area this will come in fi module i create the company codes okay and in addition to company codes normally 
business area. I'll talk, I'll talk what is business area. The business area is created in FI. After this, cross application, which means it is required in many different modules, not only a particular module, which is nothing but plant and even the storage locations. So plant and storage locations, or maybe I will keep the storage location in MM because it is used for the storage. So MM will have the storage location, MM will have the purchasing org, and MM will have the purchasing group. Okay, same way when it comes to SD, SD will have the sales org, sales organization. It will have the distribution channel. It will have the division, sales office, and sales group. Okay, so these are the important organizational elements within logistics. So if I want to understand from the logistics point of view, I need to understand what is a plant. I need to understand what is a storage location. I need to understand the purchasing organization, purchasing group, sales organization, distribution channel, division, sales office, and sales group. And that is exactly what we are going to discuss in detail. We will also try to set up all these things in the system from the configuration point of view so that we can at least in tomorrow or maybe in the next week session, we can at least start with the master data, material master data, business partner master data, along with their own configurations. Okay, so enterprise structure related things we will try to set up today, whatever possible, whatever we are left with, we will try to do it tomorrow. Okay, so see, this will be taken care by your CO module. We don't need to touch this. Okay, whenever it is done, I will show you how the controlling area has been set up in FI. Within FI, this company code and business area will be taken care by FI, which we have already completed in our FI session today. So I will give you the overview of what exactly we have done from FI. Even in your project, this responsibility has to be taken care by FI itself. And what I'll also do, I will share today's video, which I have conducted with FI, with you also, because when you are practicing, you may not need to go in detail of what is company code and a lot of other things, but at least from the configuration point of view, you should understand how to set up the company code. Okay, it is very straightforward. There are only few fields. I'll explain you now also. But still, if you want to go through the complete video, I'll be sharing it with you so that you can understand from the finance point of view, what is the role of company code and business area. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start from here, then we will go one by one. So Company code, as we understood, it is a legal entity. I will show you, we already set up this in our finance system today. So all the configurations, again, just confirming, all the configurations that you do in SAP, those are done using transaction SPRO. Okay, SPRO is a single transaction where all the customizing, all the configurations would be done by the functional consultant. Whatever settings you do in SPRO, based on this settings itself, the end users are able to do the transactions in SAP Easy Access. So this SAP Easy Access is for end users who are actually going to do the transactions. Within this SAP Easy Access, these are the different places from where the transactions would be performed. So if it is a FI user, he will be using this accounting sub-module. If he is a MM, SD, manufacturing or some other end user, he will be using this logistics. Within logistics, you can see each and every module is available. So if I want to do anything related to sales, I'll go to the sales and distribution. If I have to do anything related to MM, I will go to materials management. Right, so based on what exactly I want to achieve, I will go to that particular folder as an end user. As a consultant in the case system, fine, we can use this because we want to understand how the end user transaction works. But when it comes to the production system, we as a consultants are not at all involved in this end user activity. We are only involved in making sure in the development system, we have done the setup, we have done the configuration using this SPRO, and then that configuration is being used by the end users. Okay, so 
how to set up the new company code if you want to set up a new company code everything will come under the enterprise structure so within enterprise structure there are some components which are part of fi there are some components which are part of mm you can see there are some components which are part of sd so first because i want to set up the company code i'll go to the financial accounting and here i want to set up the company code so check copy delete check company code this is a node where i need to come and where i need to set up a new company code so if you double click on edit company code data here you can see there are total 662 company codes which are already created you can see this is a list of all those company codes which are already created if you click a particular one you will be able to see more details about this so this is a company code which is a four digit alpha numeric code okay this is asked in the exam even in logistics exams also that what is a, a, a numbering logic of company code so it is four digit maximum four digit alpha numeric it can be lesser than four digit but it cannot be more than four digits and it is alpha numeric so you can use a to z or you can use zero to one or you can use the combination of both right so in addition to the company code and company name you can enter the city country currency and language so this is what something which will be defined by your fi counterpart along with the address of the company code okay in this case the company code address is not mentioned here but normally i'll show you the one which we set up today in our fi session which we are going to continue in our logistics so that later on when we are again merging we should have a common structure we have implemented fi mm and sd for reliance communication as our sample company code okay so if i go to position the company code that we have created is rech okay which is reliance chemicals limited if you double click on this so if you want to create a new company code what you need to do is you need to click on the new entry provide the four digit alphanumeric code provide the name of the legal entity city of headquarters country currency and language once you enter this information then you can click on this address button where you'll be able to enter the address so i'll show you how exactly we have maintained this for rech okay let's double click this so we have provided this four digit code just for easy identification re is reliance and ch is chemicals city mumbai country india currency inr and language en so you can see this is a text field you can write whatever you want system will not verify whether such city exists or not but when it comes to country you can see there is this button here this is called as list of values if you click on this it will show you all those countries which are already pre delivered by sap okay so you can see there are total 253 entries which are pre delivered by sap if you want to add new it is possible but normally sap provides it through sap note okay maybe later on we will see how to or maybe let's see it now itself how to create the new countries if you go to spro img there is something called as sap net weaver okay in this sap net weaver you will be able to see the general settings okay and you can see the set countries so this is where defined countries in my sap system if you click on this it will give the list of all those countries which are already provided by sap okay and normally if there is any country which is maybe as of today whatever countries are available they are already in place but let's assume tomorrow if one country is divided into two different countries and you want to create that so instead of creating here normally sap will provide the sap note using which you would be able to see that new uh, new country also in the system mm, i think my system got logged off Uh, sir, come. I have a question. Can I ask you now? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay. Uh, regarding this new, uh, I mean, company code. Uh, normally, we we'll, we copy the 
standard one standard template and rename the things right so that uh, all the basic settings will be copied from the master template uh, yeah. will we be doing that continuously or like this creating new is fine with us now the way we are no, going both, ahead. The, both the options are fine only thing is nagesh uh, if you copy the standard one all the settings are automatically copied so that is fine okay. when you are working on the project but when you are learning you need to understand what are the things inside okay. otherwise if everything gets copied then you will not get the idea of what exactly has been copied in the background that is the reason i prefer first company code you create from scratch not only company code mm -hmm. even your plants uh, mm -hmm. sales organizations purchase organizations whatever you are doing okay. uh, first cut avoid the shortcuts try to create everything each and everything and later on once you become confident then you can just copy it and use it uh, just wanted to know like whether the same is been continued here or like it is a new thing no, no, no. Same will. Be. There is no change. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes, Tushar. Uh, sir, uh, sir, there is one field also defined company. So, so what mm -hmm. is this? Means, uh, this is the different thing. I mean, company code and company. Yes, yes, both are different. Company is normally used for the intercompany transactions. If you are doing any intercompany transactions, then only that upper one. You are talking about this one, define company. So this is only required yes, for intercompany transactions. This is called as trading partner. It has a as another functionality. It is not mandatory to create a company, but this company code is the most important thing that is required, without which you will not be able to do anything in the SAP system. So, irrespective so of company which code module you are, yeah. Uh, so company code and uh, is different, different. Things. I I thought it's the uh, same thing actually. Within company, no, 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 it's it is not company. Thing. Okay, okay, sir. No, no, it is a completely different thing. So, okay. don't get confused with this. We are only going to use the company code. Okay, so. Okay, so I was just showing you the company codes that we set up, which is RECH. I think it's already, oh, it's already logged in, then why it was giving error. So this is our uh, company code, Mumbai, country, India. I was showing you to create the new country. So if you go to, I think that particular activity is closed. So if I go to SPRO, IMG, NetViewer, uh, general settings, set countries, and define the countries in my SAP system. Okay, so this is where you can see all the countries are created. Yeah, this one. So, uh, Vikram, uh, yeah. as you said that uh, if there is a new country, SAP will provide SAP note uh, right. to you. Huh. So, uh, how do we implement that? Means, uh, how do we get the SAP notes in our system? So, no, SAP note is SAP note implementation is part of the technical. They will be doing it. Okay, Normally, so we... implements the SAP notes, and there are some SAP notes which are just the configuration. So, if you go to that SAP note, they will just tell you to follow the steps, which you can go to this particular SPRO node and go and create it. So, for example. For new countries, maybe SAP will give the instructions. Go to this particular node, click on new entry, and add this information. Once you add this information, that would be available. So in okay. SAP notes, also, there are different types. Some of the SAP notes are implemented like if a consultant will implement, it will automatically come into the system. But if you want to do it manually, there are some configuration related SAP notes. Okay, so ultimately, if any country is created, you can come here and you can add it here. Okay, but normally, even in my career, I have never seen to create any new country in the system. I'm just showing you from the technical side that it is very much possible to create the country, to create a currency. Language is already defined by SAP, so you cannot create a new language because it requires a translation also. But otherwise, currency and country, this you can create. This button is called as list of values. It will list all those countries which are already created. Okay, so not only here, whenever you will be doing any transactions in SAP, this list of values will allow you to 
select a particular value out of the available values in the system so once you enter these details you can go to the address tab in the address tab you can mention the whatever is the address and all and then if you require there are some additional fields like if you want to enter the telephone number mobile number fax email so all the contact and communication details this will help in printing so normally when you uh, let's say whenever you are printing the invoices or whenever you are printing the purchase orders so during that time if this information is available it would be printed on your invoices as well as purchase orders and all the other communications that you send to your customers and vendors right so this is what we already created as a company code and as the business area we have created six business areas again that is very straightforward just the text we have created six business areas uh, with three digits one is pun which is for pune similarly mum for mumbai okay similarly ban for bangalore nj for new jersey and why for new york so in our example what we took is we will be having six plants okay four plants in india let me let me put it in the scenario here so fi company codes or maybe before i talk about the enterprise structure let's talk about the scenario our scenario is reliance chemicals have six plants four in india two in us okay in india we have created the business area business area normally is assigned to the plant so whatever number of plants you are creating in logistics from finance point of view we will be creating that many number of business areas so four in india which means one is pun for pune second is mum for mumbai hyd1 we created because hyd was already available so hyd1 is for hyderabad and ban for bangalore two in us we created new york and new jersey these are the two business areas we created in us okay this is our first example and we will keep on adding the points here so how many sales organizations are required how many purchase organizations are required we will keep on adding here and then we'll be seeing in the system so as of now we already created the business areas which i'm trying to show you so there are six business areas just the code four digit alphanumeric code again and just the description whatever you want to give okay otherwise there are no additional fields that you need to maintain in the business areas so this is what we have done till now the next setup is all related to logistics yeah hi yes sir. so uh, why this business area requirements what is the significance uh, see, if you have multiple plants, what you have decided is Reliance Chemicals has six plants. Now, whenever you will be doing any transaction in logistics, mm -hmm. let's assume you are doing a, a purchase or you are generating the sales. So at any moment, if I want to know sales according to plant wise, I can do it very easily in the logistics because in logistics, each and every transaction plant has been uh, entered. But what if, if I want to generate the financial report plant wise, I don't have plant field available in my financial reports, right? So if I want to generate my financial reports plant wise, since plant information is not captured in finance, I need a corresponding field in finance, which is one to one assigned with the plant. So I can create it as a business area, or there are other options also like i can create it as a profit center but normally 70 to 80 percent of the times plant is created as business area in finance for plant level reports in financials so it will always be one is to one one to one most of the time it is be one is to one yeah it again depends upon the company policy so if they don't want to see let's assume you have two plants in hyderabad okay mm -hmm. and you in financials you don't want to segregate two different plants you want to consider hyderabad as a single financial entity 
So in that case, it can be two is to one. That is not a problem. So it is completely up to the business how they want to report. Based on that, they have to do the mapping. Uh, I have one more question here. Like as we know, these business area plants come under the company code. Now here we see like geographically a different location. Yes, uh, I mean like New York and New Jersey. Uh, these plants coming under company code, which is registered in India legally, and we are having the plants in US. Uh, how far it is justifiable? Both both are possible. See what will happen is I have the plants in New Jersey and New York. Let's assume these plants are just the storage locations. Okay, they are not doing their own business. They are there just to just assume now if I have a customer base in US. Okay, mm -hmm. let's say uh, I am manufacturing chemicals in India and mm -hmm. I have the uh, like sales uh, department in Pune, Mumbai, Hyderabad and Bangalore and I have some customer base in New York and New Jersey also. So my manufacturing is being done here. Either one of this location. Once the manufacturing is done, I am sending this materials for the storage here. So I'm not directly selling anything from the US entity. My entity is India itself. This is just my storage location from where I'm selling the material. Um, more like a distribution center. More like a distribution center, yes. So I don't have any legal entity in US, mm. okay? but I have the distribution center from New York and New Jersey, which I've created as a plant. Okay. My say something like a non sap terminologies if i speak i'll raise an invoice in india i for the customer who is having the purchase organization in india but whereas the requirement for them is somewhere in new jersey or somewhere nearby new jersey from new jersey distribution center i'll be delivering the goods to them is it right if i'm not wrong exactly okay thank you so uh, in this Thing like legally, how much uh, we will be entitled within US? Like if I in, if I delivery challenge, I'll be I'll be creating in New Jersey and distributing to a uh, location or client somewhere within the US. But my invoice is happening in India. But my taxes and other levies are in the invoice are to the uh, Indian counterpart or like how it is going to be? That totally um, depends upon your. Uh legal structure see many yeah, companies what they do is, it, it totally depends on the legal structure in my case i kept it simple i said i have a legal entity only in india this okay. is just my system purpose i have some okay. locations where i'm storing that material so i am not okay. doing any sales directly from new york so i'm not entitled for the taxation of new york right okay but let's assume my legal structure is like i have created a legal entity in new york and new jersey also to serve okay. the customers based on us mm. i have created mm. another legal entity in new york, new york or new jersey in that mm. case the taxes will be applicable according to the us law okay uh, okay in this uh, scenario uh, the uh, we took in this one mm. we are saying we only have one legal entity we don't have the legal entity in us so we are not actually uh, doing but any uh, legal transaction in us we are just delivering the material from Indian legal entity to the US one. Fine. Fine. Understood. I understood. Like why I asked this, like you now in India, like most of the electronics organizations, they have only sales offices in India, but Asia Pacific distribution center of the products are from Singapore. Now I create an invoice for my client here and I'll tell them that your goods will be shipped from Singapore. Uh, so like import duties, those things will not bother right in sap those things or not no again as i told you it totally depends upon your legal structure oh, so if there right. are any legal requirements yeah. if there are yeah. any legal requirements no even if you are distributing the products from here then you are applicable for again country to country it may vary but my intention is not to make it complicated i am just telling you one scenario i can easily uh, delete this also if you want to keep okay, it simple okay. no, 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 let, it, let it be <laughs> right let it be. so don't yeah. get don't get confused okay. at this moment we are keeping it very simple that the legal okay. structure is i have the legal entity only in india so my taxation mm -hmm. and all will only work from india mm -hmm. the other location i just have the storage location so that instead of buying all the material bringing it to india i can directly buy in us and sell it from there itself 
Fine, I understood. Now I understand. Very clearly see that okay, I bought the material, but instead of bringing it to India, the purchase was done at New Jersey, and the sales also was done at the New Jersey plant itself. So that I can get the business area wise report, how much profit I am making using the New Jersey plant. Okay, understood. Yeah. Okay. So FI point, you will be able to create a company code. You will be creating a business area. Now coming to the most important thing that we need to understand from the logistics point of view. This one we need to understand each and everything in too much detail. Okay, so first is let's talk about the plants. So in this case, we agreed that we are going to create six different plants. Okay, so this six different plants we have to create under the logistics structure. Okay, and when it comes to logistics, we have different modules, sales and distribution, materials management. But since it is cross application, we have to go to the logistics general. And this is where we need to create a plan. Okay, so define, copy, delete, check plan. Similar to define, copy, delete company code, there is define, copy, delete, check plan. Okay, and if you double click on this, Define plant, it will show you the list of all those plants which are already available. So there are total 366 plants which are already available in the system. What I'll do is I'll click on new entry. Okay, if I want to see the one which is already created, I can double click on it and it will give me the complete details. But if I want to create a new one, then I will click on the new entries. Okay, so just to Give the proper uh, this one. I will say RC starting with RC, which is nothing but Reliance Chemicals 01. So, this is numbering logic which you have to define, which you have to set up as per the customer's requirement. So, in my case, I am saying RC. Maybe the customer will say, No, I don't want to use uh, Reliance Chemical as a prefix. I want to use some other prefix. So, these are all the discussions that are also a very much important part of the implementation project. So what would be the numbering logic for the plant? What should be the numbering logic for the company code? What should be the numbering logic for the purchasing organization? These things all needs to be uh, discussed in detail and based on the common understanding, you have to decide on the plant code and the company code. Okay, only thing is you need to remember these are four digit alphanumeric. Okay, apart from that, there is no other prerequisite. Whatever way you want to provide the code, it is up to you and the customer. So this one RC01, let's say this is my Pune plant. So Pune plant for RC, which is, or maybe I'll write full RECH, Reliance Chemicals. So RC01 is my Pune plant. Some of the important fields here, county is not applicable in our case because we are creating it in Pune, which is in India. You have the city code. If you do F4, you'll be able to see lot City code of cities here. So maybe you can try if you are able to find the city code for Pune. So country key IN. You can see no one has created the city code till now, and that is the reason it is not appearing. And it is not mandatory. So maybe I will just enter the mandatory fields. Factory calendar is important. What do you mean by factory calendar? Factory calendar means the holidays. Okay, so definitely the factory calendar in India. We work Monday to Friday and there are some other important festivals, holidays and all which also needs to be considered. That information is entered in the factory calendar. Just give me a minute. So normally at the country level, SAP has provided the factory calendar. You can go to the factory calendar and you can search for, let's assume IN for India. You can see the factory calendar is available for India. This is one of the very important field that you need to provide. And once you click on this address button, you'll be able to enter the complete address of that particular plant. Okay, so normally in the title, you enter it as a company. Again, you will provide the name, whatever name you want to provide to the plant. So I'm providing the same name. 
that this is Pune plant for RECH. Okay, this is where you'll be able to provide the full address. So maybe whatever you want. Okay, I'm just providing some dummy address, postal code, again dummy, city, Pune, country IN. If you want to provide the state also, that will be appearing in the region. So this one is Maharashtra. There are some additional information like postal code, PO box, if you want to provide, otherwise you can leave it. And as I told you, you will be also able to enter the additional information like telephone number, mobile number, fax, email. So these are normally required if you want to print it into your forms. Okay, so these are not the mandatory fields. Definitely, if a customer is able to provide you all this information, you will take it and you will be updating in the system. If not, you can keep this blank. So when you click on OK, system will create a plan for you. Yeah. How to understand like whether a field is mandatory or not? Here it is grayed out. We can understand. And like uh, once we went to address, we have so many things, mobile number, certain things. Yeah. I'll, so I'll, I'll saying, will, it, will it tell us or like? I'll, I'll tell you. Just give me a minute. Let me save it first. And then whenever I'll be creating the new one, I'll show you. Okay. okay. Before that, when you try to save it, you will be getting this box. Okay, customizing request. Now, what is the purpose of this box? This is very important thing that you need to understand. The reason why this box has appeared is because we discussed that in SAP landscape, there are three different servers. Can you tell me what are those three different servers? Where you perform quality and production service. <clears throat> right. Development, quality, and production. The, min and the minimum where, three lands, minimum three servers. Yeah. Minimum three, right. Where exactly you will be doing this configuration, creating the plants, creating the purchasing or development? Development. Exactly. We'll be doing all those things in the development system. Right. So let's assume you got to create maybe 100 different plants for a particular company where you are implementing SAP. Okay, you created 100 plants in development system and you took around two months of time to perform all those configurations. Now you tested and you want it to be available in the quality so that the end user also can perform his testing. So what you will do in that case again you will spend another two months to perform that same configuration in quality system no we will copy or you will copy right you you want whatever effort you have put in already here you want to copy whatever effort has been done automatically to the quality okay that will save your time number one and number two Whatever you are done in two months, you may not be able to recollect each and everything and in quality you may do something else, which is a so whatever is working fine here. It may not work fine in quality because you may have you might have missed one of the step which you are done in the development. So these are the two reasons. Number one, additional effort may be required in order to set up the same thing in quality. And number two, there is a risk that something which you are done properly here may not be available here as it is. That is the reason what we normally do in SAP is whatever we are doing in the development as a configuration, we record each and everything in this TR. Okay, so whenever you are setting up anything, whenever you are trying to do any small configuration also, system will ask you for this customizing request, which is also called as TR, transport request. What exactly is the purpose of this is, it will record each and everything that you have done in the development system. Okay, and whenever you want to send the same information to quality, you just need to take this request number and you need to tell to your basis team that I have done some changes in the development. I tested, they are working fine. Please move this TR to quality so that the same changes are available in the quality system also. So within few seconds, all the settings that you have done in the development, which you captured in this particular request, 
those will be available in your quality system right so when you will be working for the first time i created this request in the finance session but if i want to create a separate request for all the mm or sd related setup i can go to the new request create a request okay so i can say this is mm sd related settings for rech okay so who is the owner what is the status of this request when it was changed last and in which client you are performing this all these things will be captured and system will generate a new request number so if a finance team wants to send only financial information they will be using the old tr which was there and if mm team wants to send the information which was done in the development system to the quality they will be transporting this particular request to the quality system so uh, yeah. we, hello yes so as we said uh, plan can be uh, plan uh, must be uh, uh, change or edited by many teams okay uh, so we will be uh, use, uh, doing our changes and uh, saving it in the same uh, tier or different different tiers no it it should be different one you see tr is user dependent whenever you are creating the tr you can see the tr has a owner if i show you Correct. any tr if i enter the earlier means uh, fitr because i i want to uh, maintain everything in one tier so can it be possible it is possible as long as you are allowed to do the changes in the tr of some other person that is possible so what you can do is let me show you if you want to see the details of the tr you can go to transaction se01 in se01 if you click on it first you provide your user and then you specify what kind of request you want to see so in our case it is a customizing request whenever a bap or technical person is making any changes the request that would be created is a workbench request okay so one is customizing request and second is a workbench request so customizing request is related to the functional settings that we are doing and workbench request is related to the technical settings which was done by abap or maybe any other technical consultant so if i want to see all the customizing requests maybe i'll remove this and click on display it will show me all the customizing request you can see this one is the last one that i created as of now i am the owner of this so if you log in with your user id and password you will not be able to use this tr at all but if there is a requirement that you are saying that okay fi mm sd everyone would use the same tr in that case i have to select this tr and i have to assign the owner i have to add the user so i am the owner but i am allowing you that you can also work on this tr so as long as you are doing this it will allow you to save your changes also in my tr but if this is not possible then you will not be able to use this tr at all and it is also recommended saying that it is also recommended that you create a separate tr for each module not only for module even for each and every activity or maybe whenever you are working on a particular project in that project you divide the work into small small parts and those small parts needs to be created as the tr instead of creating one common tr it is always recommended that you create a small small trs maybe for, for example one tr for the enterprise structure second tr for maybe the uh, approval process pio work, uh, workflow approval process third tr maybe for uh, the obyc or account determination settings four tr for output determination why we are recommending the separate trs let's assume your customer has tested everything in quality and he found out that enterprise structure works fine output determination works fine account determination also works fine but the releasing strategy is still giving the problem so what you can do at least those three things can be forwarded to the production without impacting anything on the release procedure but if you have everything in one what will happen that wrong settings will go to the production that is 
the reason your business will not give you go ahead till the time you are not solving that error so that is the reason it is recommended that don't put everything in one tr you divide it logically whatever is the logic that is up to you you divide it logically and then whatever has been accepted that can be moved to the production correct but uh, sometimes <coughs> what happens if you don't um, <coughs> sorry <coughs> move your tr in a sequential manner uh, in what uh, how they have been created and so first one a b and c if uh, we move the cr first uh, sorry tr uh, first c tr then b tr then it will create uh, errors or give uh, it will not definitely so let's assume you have created one tr for enterprise structure second tr for approval process now approval process if you send first it will not work at all because the enterprise structure plant itself is not available then how the approval process will work and that is the reason the sequence has to be maintained you have to follow the sequence so whenever you are creating a tr you have to note down in the excel sheet and you have to specify how would be the sequence in which this trs need to be sent to the production or the quality which activity should go first and which activity should go after the first one has been already sent to the quality system right akshay yeah. correct correct so that's why if there is a uh, one uh, object like uh, plant so uh, many people are working on it that uh, that's why i thought it should be in one or uh, different different tiers okay both, okay both the things are possible if you are doing it properly if you are maintaining the sequence then it is 100% recommended to segregate logically but if not if it is difficult to maintain the sequence then it is fine if you go with the single tr yeah that's why we have cs correct right. please do okay uh, ideally thanks. in a ideally in a project enterprise structure will be done in consultation with all the functional consultants they will come on they agree upon a single i mean the naming structure and all those things then only they'll go ahead and do individual things like as mr roy comes recommended like let finance do the company code and business area then the next next uh, consecutive thing like what do you call the plans and all will be taken by the respective teams if i'm not wrong 100% yes because till the time the finance is not sending the company code there is no point sending the plant and the other thing because they are all dependent on the company code so that has to be followed in the sequence okay so that is the reason whenever you are creating anything whenever you are changing anything in the system system will ask you the tr okay and that tr if you want to continue using the same tr that you used last time you can continue using that or you can create a new tr for a particular purpose okay so each and every time whenever you are setting up anything new a new plant a new company code a new purchasing or sales or storage location every time system will ask you even not new even if you want to make a small change also that has to be created as a tr so that it can be transported to quality and production is it necessary to note down the tr numbers or it will be available as a ready reach for The no it is available but again it is available if you go to ac01 you will be able to see all but it is very difficult yeah. to track it if you are not okay. maintaining it in the excel or somewhere very clearly then it is very difficult to track it because you have to drill down and you have to find out what you have done okay. see here it is clearly showing you that this tier was used to create rc01 plant t001w mix plant under yeah. the client 400 but it is not very easy to understand this technical terminology right okay. so if you maintain excel where you clearly write that okay this tr i created and under this tr these are the objects that i have changed it would be very easy for you to correlate the things whenever it needs to be transferred to quality and production mm. understood yeah also track our uh, work also what all we have done until what exactly exactly And so you can create a consolidated list of work and for each work you can assign the uh, corresponding uh, okay so like this you will keep on continuing creating multiple plants i will go to rc02 and i'll answer your question you asked so let's say this is my mumbai plant 
for R E C H. Okay, I will go to factory calendar once again. Uh, your question was mandatory. mandatory. Okay, for and yeah, before but, that, as we are here in this factory calendar uh, thing, uh, see like now we, uh, in the previous example for Pune plant, we took uh, calendar, India calendar. So like though India calendar, I may have my own uh, holidays and my own set of things. Maybe I will work three days only. I will work four days. Can I have my right. own calendar here? Yes, yes, yes. You can create a factory calendar. Normally, this factory calendar is created by the manufacturing team. Because okay. normally this factory calendar is responsible for the uh, like the manufacturing calendar. Like when are they going to? Because normally you know in factory it is like if there is not much demand, the manufacturing happens only maybe two days a week or three days a week. So that factory calendar is normally created by them, and we can directly use it. Okay. Chances of my distribution center also being work, worked for only three days, even in that case also I can create, right? Even can, yes. Okay. Uh, but we will see. Is it part of the configuration itself? Factory calendar. Yes. This is part of the configuration itself. No, I mean I mean to say clear, 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 creating of factory calendar. Yes, yes. It is part of okay. the configuration. Creating, okay. adjusting, whatever you want to do, it can be done under the factory calendar itself. Okay. So as a like um, no after after I implement, uh, so for mm -hmm. example, uh, in an implemented uh, SAP system, the end user will not have any uh, thing like every year he will be creating the factory calendar, is it? So yes, that will be front, front end activity or like config activity, and that's what I wanted to understand. It is normally given to the consultant. Okay, okay. normally it is not given to the end user. As a Consultant, you you have the responsibility to define the factory calendar maybe for next quarter or next six months. You can do that. So you can do it maybe according to the year, according to the quarter, and you have to update the local holidays also. Okay, so for example, Monday to Friday is fine, but what if on the Thursday it falls as a holiday? So that also okay. you need to maintain the factory calendar. I see. Uh, no, already implemented. Say now in the production system, something is going on. Like suddenly now, consider like our COVID thing. So the company says we'll work only three days. So in that case, also a consultant only have to update the calendar. Both the options are available. You can provide okay. this access to the end user also, but normally it is handled by the consultant. Fine. Okay. Understood. Thanks. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about this factory calendar in detail when we we'll do the configuration. Thanks. So as we yeah, arrived here, I like uh, I got this doubt and I asked you. Thanks. No problem. No problem. So factory calendar I am entering here. Now you can see in some of the fields, even if the field is mandatory, it will not show you anything. But in some other fields, for example, if I go to address, you can see here country tick box. It is showing tick box, which means it is highlighting this field is mandatory. But again, this is not mandatory. It is not like in every system you will be able to see this type of settings normally the settings are done from the gui options let me try to recollect where exactly it is done from so normally you go to this customizing options and then there is somewhere where you say highlight the mandatory field if i'm able to remember now i'll show you otherwise i'll come back to you or maybe if someone of you already remembers it you can just tell me Somewhere here it is. No problem. Let me come back to you on this. So you okay, can make it. You can tell the system that please show the tick box whenever the field is mandatory. So in some of the systems, it will not even show you this box. It will not show you this field. When you try to save it, then only the system will tell you this field is mandatory. Okay. Right. So I'll just go with name. This is my Mumbai plant for RECH. And you can enter the address. Since the mandatory field is country, I'm just entering the country here and clicking on save. So again, it will generate a TR. Now it is up to me whether I want to use the same TR for two plants. Okay, I'm already inside the uh, configuration. That is the reason it has not asked me for TR. 
But if I go back and come again, I can create a separate TR for the separate plant. So if I want to keep this segregated, I want to keep everything separate for two plants. And at any point of time, if my plant one is good to go, I just want to move that TR from quality or development to quality that can be done. But if I'm having a single TR, then what will happen is both the plants will go together. I cannot say I want to move only one plant from company code or sorry from the development to quality. Okay, and that is the reason it has to be logical. It has to be decided uh, between the team whether you are going to create a common TR or you are going to distribute the TR according to the plant wise, according to the activity wise, and that will definitely help you in this transports. Okay, so as of now, I'm creating two plants. Maybe uh, the other plants, I will give it to you so that you can, to, from tomorrow onwards, you'll be also getting the system access. You can also try to create your own plants as well as the remaining four plants, which uh, we discussed we need to create in this system. Okay, so what okay. comes after the plant? Once the plants are created, we need to create the storage location. Right within the plants, there can be multiple storage locations. Storage locations means what? Storage locations means where you are going to store the material. Okay, now within the storage location, just just take an example. You have a plant in Pune. Okay, this is a very big plant. Okay, so there are different rooms. For example, within the plant, there are different rooms. So each and every room, let's call it as a storage location. Now within these rooms, there are different, uh, you can say racks. And within the racks, there are boxes, right? So that much level can be controlled, but if you want to go that much detailed, racks, boxes, bins, and all, then in addition to the normal MM, you also need to implement warehouse management. Warehouse WM management, sorry, WM, which is a warehouse management, helps you to go beyond the storage location. If you are using MM, the last place where you can store the material is storage location. But if you want to go beyond that, then you need to implement WM module where it will allow you to specify the details at the bin level, at the box level also. Okay. So within MM, within one plant, you can have multiple storage locations. How are you going to create the storage locations? You'll come to IMG and you can see here, let me come out of the logistics. Storage location will come as a part of materials management and you can see maintain the storage locations. Okay, you will come here. Each and every storage location will belong to a single plant. Can I have one storage location which is available at multiple plants? It is not possible logically also, right? One plant having multiple storage locations, but one storage location cannot be available at multiple plants. So that is the reason we have to specify for which plant we are creating the storage locations. So I'll say RC01 is my plant, and I want to create a storage location, let's say S001. So if I have two storage locations within my plant, this is storage location one, and I'm creating storage location two. Okay, again at the storage location level also, if the address is different, I can provide the address information also, but normally we don't use this. Let me show you how exactly it will work. So this is sequential number if you want to provide. Okay, and you can provide the address here. Okay, but 99% of the times the storage location address is same as a plant and that is the reason we don't provide this information. Just, just the storage location creation is enough. Okay, so I'll just save it. Storage location has been created. Two storage locations we created. Number one is S001 and number two is S002. So whenever we are going to buy any material, when the material will arrive, when you do the good receipt in the system, system will ask you, where do you want to store this material? Storage location is one of the mandatory field whenever you are buying any material. Once the material reaches your stock, 
you need to very clearly tell the system under which storage location you want to keep this material and based on that you can generate your reports also if i want to know how much material is available in storage location s001 how much material is available in s002 i can very easily get it because each and every material will be tracked at the storage location level okay so as of now we are just understanding the high level enterprise structure when we'll do the transactions we will be able to understand where exactly this enterprise objects are actually being used okay you will get more info when you start start doing the transactions okay any questions on plant and storage locations before i go to the next one hello yes uh, uh sir if uh, a plant within the country oh sorry within the city and the storage location uh, is it necessary that uh, uh, it is necessary that uh, storage location should be in plant means yes, by address wise see storage location is the place where you are going to store the material so if yep. you have a plant within plant if you feel that the plant is very small and i don't need to segregate into different storage locations still at least one storage location has to be created for the plant sir if uh, okay. within the city we have a one storage location for two plants is this possible within the ones within the city one storage location and two plants how it is possible yes, storage location is within plant na let's assume okay. let's assume you are in mumbai your company is in mumbai and you have two plants one okay. in uh, bandra and second is let's say in thane right okay now within the plant in thane plant you have the storage locations na you cannot have the common okay. storage location which is shared by thane and bandra right it is not possible practically not possible okay okay Plant is a higher entity and storage location is a lower entity. So, uh, exactly. Within the plant, you can have the different storage locations, but you cannot have one storage location which is sharing with multiple plants. Okay. Now coming to purchasing organization. Okay, this is very important from the MM point of view. Whatever purchase orders, whatever purchase requisitions, in short, whatever purchasing you will be doing. for each and every purchasing you need to have the purchasing department purchasing organization simple is purchasing department purchasing department who is responsible for purchasing all the externally procured materials okay externally procured means whatever materials you are buying from outside your company so let's assume reliance chemicals is having a purchasing department so there can be various different scenarios now right we can say reliance communication sorry reliance chemicals has only one purchasing department who is taking care of all the plants so for mumbai pune bangalore hyderabad new york new jersey there is one single purchasing department who is purchasing on everyone's behalf that is one scenario i can say i have a separate purchasing department for each plant plant wise i have a separate purchasing department so i have one purchasing department at pune i have second purchasing department in mumbai and they are responsible for their own purchases so purchasing department pune has nothing to do with whatever has been purchased in mumbai because it will be taken care by purchasing department of mumbai so that is a second scenario third scenario can be if i have multiple legal entities okay let's say instead of reliance chemicals let's assume we are implementing sap at reliance group within reliance group we have reliance chemical also we have reliance let's say communication also and we are saying reliance communication and reliance chemicals they don't have the separate purchasing department there is a common purchasing department for overall reliance group that is a third scenario so these are the three scenarios that you need to understand number 1 you have a cross company purchasing org which means your purchasing org is not relevant for the company code 
one purchasing org is serving the requirements of all the different company codes number 2 we are saying for each company code we have a separate separate purchasing department so for all the plants of that purchase of that particular company code has the same purchasing department that is purchasing org at the company code level and third one we are saying at the plant level uh nagesh there is some background noise if you have questions please go ahead no 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 it's okay yeah yeah so these are the three scenarios which we need to understand this is a common question which is asked in the interviews and in the exam at what level we create a purchasing org so these are the three scenarios at which you can create a purchasing organization okay so if you are creating a purchasing organization at the plant level all your purchasing so sorry all your plants have to be assigned to the purchasing org if you are creating the purchasing org at the company code level then also you need to assign the purchasing org at the company code first and then all the plants also need to be assigned to the purchasing org but if you are defining the purchasing org at cross company code level in that case you don't need to mandatorily assign the company code to the purchasing org okay if if you, if it is very uh, high level for you don't worry we will see all these things in the system but just remember the three scenarios how exactly it will work and we will you tell me which scenario you want me to show in the system is it okay if i create the purchasing org at the plant level which is the minimum level i think that is something which most of the companies follow or some of the companies follow purchasing department at the company level there are very few companies who follow cross company purchasing or okay so purchasing department single purchasing department serving multiple companies this is very rare scenario okay so what i'll do is i'll set up the purchasing org at the plant level if it's a very big company it will go by plan by plan if it's a medium or small company it will go by legal entity it's company code level right exactly and if there is a uh, if i give you the example in my example i had said reliance chemicals and reliance uh, communication which is very uh, bad scenario to be frank because they, these are two separate uh, industries all together but there are some companies even if they are chemical company they have multiple legal entities just to save the tax right so in that case they have created different legal entities just for saving the tax but internally everything is same internally the departments are common so in that case we can create one single purchasing org which will be taking care of multiple company codes clear on this okay okay then what is purchasing group purchasing org is equal to purchasing department what is purchasing group then so i am just writing this three scenarios purchasing department can be cross company or company specific or plant specific these are the three scenarios i have the slides also to show so that will give the clear idea purchasing group means within the purchasing department there can be different users or the group of users so for example we have a purchasing department which is in mumbai in that purchasing department mr x takes care of all the goods all the materials procurement and mr y takes care of all the service related procurements this is a very small company and that is the reason there is only one person who is responsible for material procurement and there is one person who is responsible for service procurement if it is a big company then the group of people okay there is a separate team within the purchasing department there are two separate teams one is taking care of the material procurement second is taking care of service procurement 
So this material and service, I'm just giving you the example. You can segregate as you want. You can say I have a purchasing department. Within the purchasing department, there are two teams. One team is responsible for domestic procurement. Second team is responsible for international procurement. So it is up to the customer how they divide, how they want to divide their purchasing department into multiple teams. Okay, so this is either user or group of users. It's called as a purchasing group. Whenever you are creating a purchase order in the system, system will ask you which purchasing group is responsible for this procurement. Which team is responsible for this procurement? So that is the user or the group of users. So this is a role uh, specifically is you can see if one person has a uh, doing both the things uh, procurement for material and service. So but role has to be separate. Right. Correct. The, yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay, so let me now set up or maybe before I set up, let me show you this thing in the PPT so that it gives you a clear idea how exactly this purchasing group and purchase organization work before I show you in the system. Just give me a minute. Okay, let me know if you are able to see my screen now again. I'm sharing the PPT now. Yes. Okay. So we discussed within the client, there are multiple company codes. Within the company codes, there are different plants. And you can see within one plant, there can be multiple storage locations. So one location, one storage location will be one, one to one or maybe many to one would be assigned to one plant. Okay, and similarly, plant also, you cannot have a plant which is cross company. Normally, plant is also assigned to the single company code. Okay, then you have this purchasing of what we discussed just now. You can have a plant specific purchasing of, which means each plant is having their own purchasing department. This is plant specific purchasing organization. So department is separate for each plant. Number two, you have a cross plant purchase organization. So there are two plants, okay? And those two plants are using the common purchasing department, which is defined at the company code level. Or third one can be, you have a cross company purchase organization where you have multiple company codes. You can see these are two company codes. Within these two company codes, there are multiple plants, but their purchasing department is common, which is being shared by multiple plants, multiple company codes. Very small organization who just for taxation purpose, they have created the different legal entities, but ultimately they are uh, managed as a one company itself internally. They will be going with this approach because they don't have the separate purchasing team for each legal entity. They have a same purchasing team who is responsible for all the purchasing throughout the multiple companies. Okay, sales area we will come. We are not discussed till now. So key takeaways from the MM point of view, purchasing organization can be plant specific, cross plant and cross company code. Relationship between plant and purchasing org is many to many. So many plants can use the same purchasing organization. Right? And one plant can also be used by multiple purchasing organizations. So I can also say there, there are different purchasing departments who are purchasing for one plant. Okay, I think this is a fourth scenario. This should be added as a fourth scenario. We said one plant, one purchasing of, but it is also possible that one plant can use multiple purchasing organizations. There is no restriction. Okay, and very importantly, which is asked in the exam, assignment between purchasing org and company code is not mandatory. 
it is not necessary that purchasing org has to be assigned to the company code i can use a purchasing org which is taking care of multiple company codes so if i am going with this option cross plant purchasing organization then i don't need to sorry if i'm going with this cross company code purchasing organization then i don't need to assign my purchasing organization to plant instead sorry purchasing organization to company code is not mandatory i can just assign purchasing organization to the plant plant specific would be the answer for that right there is no, there is no need to assign the purchasing organization to company code as long as i assign the plant to the purchasing of that itself serves the purpose Okay, so these are very important things that you should remember. Creation and all is very straightforward, but these are the type of questions which you need to remember. And whenever you are also providing the solution to the customer, you should be aware that these are the three scenarios that SAP supports. And if a customer is asking you for a particular scenario, you should be able to tell him which out of these three scenarios will suit the customer's requirement. Okay, so now I'll go to SPRO. I'll go to IMG. Uh, if I want to create a purchasing org, I need to go to the enterprise structure once again. Definition, materials management. Okay, we already created the storage location. Next one is maintain the purchasing organization. I'll open this maintain purchase organization. This is where I need to create the purchasing org. You can see the screen is similar to what we have seen in the plant, in the company code. Everywhere it is same. It will show you whatever. Purchase organizations are already created. And if you want to create a new, you need to click on the new entry. So I'll click on the new entry. I want to provide the purchase organization code, which is again four digit alphanumeric. So uh, let's say I am keeping it as same as plant because I want to do it at the plant level. If I want to do it at the company code level, I will try to keep the same code as company code so that there is no confusion. So purchasing organization RC01, I will use to make sure that the procurement or purchase that I'm doing for plant RC01 is done by purchasing organization RC01. So this is my purchasing org for plant RC01. Okay, again, it is restricted to number of characters. See, it is not allowing me to enter more than I think 20 characters. That is the reason I had to restrict it to 20 characters only. So RC01. Okay, try to save it. And the purchasing organization has been created. It is not asking you for address and all. Purchasing organization has been created. Now, how the system will know that this purchase organization I want to use for which plant? This purchase organization I want to use for which company code? So for that, in addition to the definition, there is an assignment also. I need to assign this purchase organization to my plant, to my company code. So that I have to do in materials management. And here you can see assign the purchase organization to company code, assign the purchase organization to plant. These are the two important configurations. So you'll go to assign. You can see here if I go for purchasing org, RC01. Currently, it is not assigned to any company code and it is not mandatory also. If I want to use this purchasing org for multiple different company codes, then I don't need to assign here. I need to only assign the purchasing org to the company code if I want this purchasing org should be used only for this company code. Okay, if I want to use this purchasing org for two different company codes, I cannot create two lines here. There is no option of new entry. It is only allowing me to create a assign the purchasing of to one company code. Due to some reason, if I want two company codes, then I need to keep it blank. Then only system will allow me to use this purchasing of for multiple company codes. If I provide my company code here, now this purchase organization cannot be used for any other company code other than RECH. Okay, so just save it. We are very clear that this purchasing organization would be only used for company code RECH. Now again within RECH, which plant can use this purchasing of? 
I can assign a single purchasing org to two different plants, or I can assign one purchasing organization to one plant. So if I want RC01 to be used only for plant RC01, fine. If I want RC01 to be used for RC02 also, no problem. I can use cross plant purchasing organization also. Okay, these things are important. One to one, one to many relationships. These are very important, which will give you a lot of confidence when you will be giving the solution to the customer. Okay, so one purchasing of one plant. This is what we specified. If I want to create a separate purchasing org for my separate plant, I have to first create a purchase organization and then I have to. Here and they have to assign it to the plant. Yeah, Vikram, uh, whenever you are okay. saving. Hello? This was about. Yeah. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, whenever you are saving, yes, I can is, hear you. Yeah, it is giving you the same TR number. So, uh, how it must be, you said uh, it should be different. No, 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 Akshay, I told it is it should be different, but it is up to us. This is the test system. We are not bothered about the TR in this case. When it is a real time project, now, if yeah. If I want to uh, create a different TR now, now we, if by default it is giving me the same now i have uh, i want to create a different tr for it so i have to go for a different how do i do yeah, let me let me show you see i'm deleting this okay whatever i created the combination i'm deleting it and trying to save so by default system will propose the same tr if i want a new tr i will click on this new button if I want to select the TR which is already created, but I don't want to use this one, I can go here and it will show me all the modifiable TRs that are already created. So I can select which one I want. Okay, it will give us the option for uh, 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 someone else's TR which I am added in, in uh, their TR. Yes, if you are added, it will show you someone other's TR. If you are not added, it will only show you your TR. Okay, okay. Others provided you have credentials to access yeah, the other if person's they, identity. If they have added no. me in their user, so uh, I think I am able to edit. Correct. Exactly. I've shown you know, that if this is a TR, and if you mm -hmm. want to add another user, you can click on this, and that user will be able to use this TR then. Correct. Okay, so I need to add it again. Yes. One small question, like uh, maybe I missed it there. Like purchase organization assigning to multiple company codes, then I will not be assigning the uh, company code. I will just keep it blank, blank right? So similarly, for purchase organization, if I want to uh, connect that purchase organization to multiple plants, I will not be assigning or should I do have the no. option to assign? No, Nagesh, for each plant, if you want to use the purchasing of, you have to assign it to the plant. That is mandatory. Okay. Now, like, if I, I want to assign this RC01 to RC02 plant also, I have to assign it here, is it? In this screen, the one which you are showing. Yeah, it's okay. what you need to do. So RC01 okay. and RC02. So you are saying for two plants, Pune and Mumbai plant will be using the same purchasing department. Right. I understand. Yeah. You, can, you can also say that same plant will be using two purchase organization that is also possible so many to many okay, relationships zero to, okay. mm -hmm. yeah, many to many relationship between purchase org and plant uh one more thing if uh if we have maintained plant at company code level uh, sorry mm -hmm. purchase org at company code level so uh, uh we don't have, uh, need to maintain separately for plant level correct uh, exactly. Are we uh, whatever plants are under company code level? We have to maintain separately for that also. We have to maintain. Even if you already assigned the purchasing of to company code, then for each plant you have to assign to the purchasing of. Again, the same means uh, if uh, purchase org is same uh, as the it's under the one company code only. So I have to maintain this uh, same again and again. Uh, yes. Yes. 
Yes, this is mandatory. No. Even if you assign the company code to the purchasing org, still you need to assign the purchasing uh, organization to plant for each and every plant. Okay. Over the scenario, where we have seen four, three, four scenario, four scenarios. Uh, in each of scenarios, we have to maintain the uh, for uh, each level for plant level. Hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah, I think it is already assigned. So our ultimately, what we have done is we have assigned RC zero one to RC zero one. Yeah, RC zero one is assigned to RC zero one. So this is about purchasing org. The, the purchasing group is not created in the enterprise structure. Purchasing group would be available within materials management folder itself. We can look at it later on. So this, that is not part of the enterprise structure, but yes, although it is not part of the enterprise structure within the folder here, but it has to be taken very seriously in the enterprise structure discussion itself. Okay, it is just a team or it is a group of people or it is a single people who is responsible within the purchase department to procure certain kind of materials or services. Okay, clear with purchasing org and the purchasing group. Okay, let's go to the next one now. Let's talk about the sales organization structure. Now within sales, similar to purchasing org, what is purchasing org? Purchasing org equal to purchasing department. Similarly, sales organization is what? It is a sales department who is responsible for selling. So just take an example. You got a very big organization, okay? And you have different sales team with their targets. Okay, so different sales departments. Maybe it, it may not be uh, the same product they are selling. It can be different products they are selling. So there is a separate sales department who is selling. Uh, let's take a Amazon, example of Amazon. Or let's take the same example that we are talking about which is uh, our uh, Reliance Chemicals. So what are the different products Reliance Chemical is selling? Let's say fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, now it is sanitizer, right? So these are all products. And I want to have a completely independent sales department for different kind of products. So there is a separate sales team who is responsible for fertilizers separate team who is responsible for insecticides, pesticides, or I can have a common team who is responsible for all the different kind of products. So that depends upon the company, whether they want to have the same sales department or they want to have an independent sales department for each product. Can I have a common sales department who is selling for all company codes? Similar to purchasing department, we are we understood the purchasing department can be common, which is serving the need of multiple company codes. Can we have a, in the same way? Can we have the same sales department who is taking care of multiple company codes? No, it is not possible. Even physically, if you have a same sales department, but still in SAP, you have to create a separate sales department at the company code level. You cannot have the same sales department who is doing the sales for multiple company codes in SAP system. And that is the reason sales organization assignment to company code is mandatory. Okay, purchase organization, we understood it was not mandatory. Why? Because multiple company codes can use the same purchasing department. But one sales department cannot serve the purpose of multiple company codes. One sales department, only one company code. Within one company code, different products, fine. But one sales department equal to one company code, that is mandatory thing that you need to define. Okay, so in purchasing, there were three scenarios. Number one, cross company. Number two, company code level. Number three, cross plant level, or maybe at the plant level. In sales, what are the two scenarios? It can be at the company code level 
or it can be at the maybe whatever below level you want product level plant level up to you how you want to segregate your sales department right so that is nothing but sales organization equal to sales department you have to create at the company code level or below the company code level you cannot create above the company code level what is distribution channel then sir this is a way to uh, distribute a product to the consumer right so whenever you have the sales department let's say reliance chemicals what are the different ways the product is distributed so reliance chemical will sell the material to the wholesalers for example they are not directly dealing with the retailers so they will sell it to the wholesalers number one number two they can sell okay with, to the wholesalers also first option is they can sell the normal uh like the normal sales second can be online sales in which reliance communication uh, sorry reliance chemical has a website uh, you can go over there you can order your product and you will be getting this so that is the second way in which reliance chemical sells their material okay these are the different distribution channels one can be physical second can be online third can be through application mobile application these are just the examples of different distribution channels retail store okay retail store yes retail store if you have a retail store there also you can go even locations also so it is not only whether it is a online or it is a physical or it is a application or it is a store even different stores can also be treated as the distribution channels so if i have 10 different stores five different stores in mumbai five different stores in pune again those are my distribution channels from where i am distributing that material right so that is a distribution channel what do you mean by division what do you mean by division don't think from the sap point of view division is what under the sales department what will be the different divisions similar group of product lines the different right. different type of yes product lines right we already discussed divisions can be fertilizers it can be insecticides it can be sanitizers so these are the divisions if i am see one option is i create the sales organization at the product line level second option is i will create a sales organization at the top level itself company code level and my divisions would be the product lines so i can create one sales organizations and multiple products at the division right that will unnecessarily save my time rather than creating multiple sales organizations so distribution channels are ways in which product or services can be distributed okay divisions are maybe product lines maybe locations also so that completely depends how the companies wants to divide the divisions into okay so for amazon if i take the example of amazon what would be the distribution channel the distribution channel is you can order through mobile app you can order through online okay these are the distribution channels in which amazon sells the product what are the divisions divisions can be electronics it can be furniture it can be uh, computers laptops so these are the different divisions whenever uh, you create a order whenever you place the order in amazon website maybe internally they are tracking all these things this order belongs to furniture or the mobiles or the electronics so they are capturing all this. whenever you are placing the order to amazon they are capturing whether the order was placed using the a website or it was placed using the mobile application so that they can get the report they can see where exactly my revenue is coming from my website is giving me more revenue or my mobile application is giving me more revenue right so these are important things to consider from the strategic point of view that is the reason 
uh, this information is required to be captured at the each and every sales order level. What about sales office? Again, just don't think from SAP point of view. What is sales office? Physical office where the sales team can sit. Okay, from which office you are working? From which office this order is being delivered to the customer? Again, it can be team. There are multiple teams. One team is sitting in sales office number one, second team is sitting at sales office number two. So which team is responsible for this particular sales? Right? I think it will give the complete picture if you see this example. This is all coming from SAP. So I just tried to show you how exactly it will look like. So you can see I have a sales organization. Okay, within the sales organization, there is a distribution channel, there is a division, there is a sales office, and there is a sales group. This is overall structure. There is something called a sales area. Sales area is combination of sales organization, distribution channel, and division. Okay, so at any point of time, if you if someone is asking you what is a sales area, it is a combination of sales of distribution channel and division. Okay, so you can see sales area, sales organization 1010, distribution channel 10, and division 00. Okay, more details. You can see this sales organization, these are the distribution channels. One is resale, second is direct sale. If you go to magicbricks.com, makan.com, or any residential purchase if you are doing, or if you are searching for any real estate so there also there is an option whether you are looking for the resale properties or you are looking for the new properties this can be also treated as a distribution channel for the uh, real estate portals okay that is an example which yeah sorry go ahead the, the resale and direct sell will be the divisions no Means, it can be divisions uh, also Resale no, property. Okay. Okay. Well, no, it how it actually okay, it, it is completely flexible. However, you want to put it. SAP provided two different options. You can utilize it as you want. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this example I'm taking you, this is from SAP itself. You can see distribution channel is resale and direct sale. Division, what are the divisions here? You can see divisions are the product lines. So this company is manufacturing cycles also and they are manufacturing cars also. Maybe just for example, or maybe they are selling instead of manufacturing, we can selling. So they have two divisions. One is selling the bicycle, second is selling the cars. Take an example of Amazon itself. They are doing small, small products also and larger products also. So they can consider this as a division. Correct. Does Amazon work on SAP? Amazon, I think background they are using SAP. Yes, they have a very strong team of SAP in Singapore. I think. Oh, okay. In the uh, background, it is completely SAP. Okay. Like now, as I can say, like sales area, minimum requirements for SAP when I'm configuring, I need to have a sales org, a distribution channel, and a division. The sales office and sales group are like physical entities, but will not be are we uh, what do you call configuring them in SAP or like it is just a physical entity no, sales office and sales group yeah nagesh we can configure but those are not mandatory whenever okay. you are so, creating the sales order it's not mandatory mm -hmm. to enter that information but distribution channel and division are important even if you have yeah. distribution channel single division that also needs to be entered at the time of sales order Yes, yes, this I understood. Like sales area, minimum requirement is these three things: sales org, division, I mean, distribution channel, and division. These three in the similar, I mean, the way I named it in that sequence only, it will come. But right. sales office, sales group, it is up to the implementation side, like whether that specific client is needed or not. But these three, whether if it is needed or not, we need to create. Am right. I right? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, then you have sales office and sales group. So this is a sales area, which is your sales organization, distribution channel, and division. 
Now within this, if you want to have separate sales offices, you can see for a southern region, northern region. Again, within the sales office, you can have different teams who are working. So these are the groups of team. Again, within the groups, you can have the salespersons. So at the time of sales order creation, if you want to capture who is responsible for this sales, you can capture the sales group, you can capture the salesperson, you can capture the sales office also. At any point in time, if you want to generate a report, what is my total sales from this sales group? What is my total sales for this salesperson? Those information can be captured very easily if you provide this information at the time of processing the sales orders. Okay. So key important takeaways from SD point of view is sales area is a combination of sales org, distribution channel and division. Sales organization is assigned to exactly one company code. This question is very likely to come in the exam. True or false or I can assign the sales org to multiple company codes or sales org assignment to company code is optional. This kind of questions are asked in the exam. So it is very clear. Sales in org exam, is always in exactly exam they are directly uh, this kind of question. They will. Uh, it's a total English exam. It's so. Right. No, no. Nowadays, uh, nowadays they change. Nowadays there are a lot of practical questions. Around 20 to 30 percent of the questions are now practical scenarios. Right. Yeah, this is the company that is the uh, this company code and uh, very market. Yes, right. Okay, and sales org is assigned to one or more plants. You can assign multiple plants to the same sales organization. Okay, so sales department cannot if, if the plant is not assigned to the sales organization, then that particular sales department will not be able to sell any product from that particular plant. So whichever plant you want to include in your sales department, that has to be assigned to your sales organization. Okay, so quickly, maybe we will try to finish this off today. It will not take much time. The configuration is very straightforward. Ultimately, you need to understand what can be assigned and what are the different uh, prerequisites of the assignment so i'll go to the enterprise structure once again okay and this time i will come out of materials management and i'll go to the sales and distribution so number one is assign the sales okay first of all i don't need to go to assignment i need to go to definition because i have to create all these objects so again in definition i will come out of mm and I'll go to ST. First one is define the sales organization. So in my case, I'm assigning a single sales organization which would be responsible for all the plants. I'll give the same code which is RECH. Okay, this is sales org for RECH. Statistics currency, all other fields are optional. We will be discussing this. This is ALE which means if there is any interface with the purchase order so these are all advanced scenarios which we'll be discussing later on as of now i'm just providing the statistics currency as inr okay i'll try to save it it will ask me for the address similar to purchasing of sorry similar to plant it is asking you the address so just provide the address information country in and if you have other information available you can enter that like we entered in the plant and the company code if not normally when you are working in the company if you are doing this for the real time implementation then definitely you should try to capture most of the information at least the address part because this address part is very important it will be updated in your invoices okay so it, it should be entered properly so sales organization is created. Next one is I'll go to the distribution channel. Okay, let's assume for Reliance Chemicals, we have only two distribution channel. One is 01, which is website. I'll be selling from website. Number two, I'll be selling from mobile app. Just for example, normally 
or maybe if you want i can add third one also which is stores store sales okay and try to save it uh, because these codes are already used so maybe i need to use maybe r1 it is also used if the distribution channel is already created with this code then you will not be able to use it so i have to provide something which is not already used okay so 0 2 0 3 and 0 4 these are the things these are the distribution channels that we created for our company code our sales of then you have sales office and sales group which are optional if you want to create you can create one sales office so i will say this is sales office rech itself it's assume we only have one sales office Okay, it is asking you the address of this office again. So if you have the full address, you can provide it. Otherwise, for the testing purpose, you can leave it blank. But when you are working in the system, definitely you have to provide all the details. Okay, sales group, which is a team. So I will just say, again, RECH team. This is three characters. It will not allow you the fourth character. So REC. Okay, this field I think you are able to see in every place. Hide in means if you click on this, then in F4, I told you in the list of values, when you select the list of values, it this field will not appear by default. So it will be hidden at the time of transaction. Okay, if you want to hide a particular field that the user should not be able to use it in the list of values, then you can come here and you can say hide in. If you want to restrict it, but otherwise normally you just need to untick it only. Uh, here unrestrict means in a well in a document it may not be mandatory also. No, no, no. It is not about mandatory and all. It is about when you do F4. For example, if I try to show you creation of sales order, this will be used in creation of sales order, right? Mm -hmm. so if I go to sales order. It is asking you sales organization, distribution channel, division, sales office, and group. So this is a button of list of values. Mm -hmm. It will show me all the sales organizations or sales offices which are created. If I mm -hmm. click on hide in, then that will not appear here. It mm -hmm. will be hidden in this particular list. Although I can enter it manually. If I remember, I can enter it manually, but it will not mm -hmm. appear in that list. Okay. Um, why now, like uh, is the practical use i'm not sure why it is if it is not going to use even why we are, even we are not doing this this is just because if you want to restrict something from the user then you can say okay this has to be hidden from the user so that he is not able to see it. but otherwise there is no i don't see any practical use of it if we don't uh, not, uh, assign it to the particular sales or sales area i don't think user will able to uh, enter it correct no 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 see at the at one end you want to assign so which means definitely you want to use it but oh. you want to restrict it to appear from a user it should be only available for the user who remembers it key users okay yes yeah got it uh, now here we are, let this be there uh, one minute okay now like we have sales organization distribution channel division and sales office mm -hmm. and sales group now like mm -hmm. after this i am going to assign this to respective I mean hierarchical thing like uh, which plant which distribution channel should go to which sales org all this here yeah, that is these three are as we discussed the sales org distribution channel and division are the mandatory things minimum sales uh, area uh, what do you call hierarchies so as i have created right. sales office and sales group also here in this case and I, I would have assigned it even without these two my order will work or like i need to give all the five hierarchies no no, no. without sales office and sales group your order will work 
okay so minimum is this three minimum are this three yes uh, though whether i have assigned sales office or sales group it doesn't matter uh, the, when when my three hierarchical definitions are available right, right. exactly okay. yes okay so what we were doing our uh, distribution channel we created sales office and sales. i think the last one we created sales group right we saved it or not rec it is saved so we have already completed this uh, we need to assign now and division you can see division is still not asked okay yeah. division is still not asked we will talk about division so first let's go to the assignment and go to sales and distribution now you can see assign the sales organization to company code which is mandatory okay and that to one is to one so which means if i go to not one is to one many is to one so many sales organizations can be assigned to one company code but one sales organization can be assigned to only one company okay so sales org is rech you can see this field is mandatory in case of purchasing org it was not mandatory in case of sales org it is mandatory okay so we assigned our sales organization to our company code next one is assign the distribution channel to the sales organization okay so here you will do new entries your sales org which is rech will assign to distribution channel we created two distribution sorry three distribution channels two 03 yeah. and 04 right so we yeah. are assigning yes. all this four all this three so that whenever you are creating the sales order system will ask you how you are selling this is it through the mobile app or someone has ordered through store or it has been ordered through website okay and when you created the distribution channel this distribution channels can be used by other sales organizations also right whatever you created mobile app website we assigned it here in the sales organization but another sales organization can be also assigned to the same distribution channels as long as distribution channels are assigned to sales org those sales organization also can use the other distribution channels okay then you have division i think division we are not created so we need to go to definition let's go to logistics general and we create the division here okay so you will go to division define the division new entry so what are our divisions in our case we are saying our divisions are fertilizers so division is also two digit code so i think 01 would be already used let me try 02 it is also used maybe let me try r1 yeah r1 r2 so this is for i am already creating two fertilizers and let's say sanitizers so i want to be very clear that whatever sales is being happening it is related to fertilizers or it is related to sanitizers so these are my two divisions okay which i need to assign now to my sales org so again i'll go to sales and distribution with an assignment okay so which activity we were doing we were doing assign the division to the sales organization what about cross division means do we have to uh, maintain it separately or zero zero will be mean be called uh, sorry for what akshay cross division no 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 cross division will if you want cross division then again you will not be able to generate the record na yeah but generally 00 is the default that's why we have to maintain it separately or uh, for our two sanitizer and fertilizer or cross division means it will be default for those two no 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 see 00 is maintained by default so you can use as per your requirement but in our case we are saying each and every sales order will be either fertilizer or sanitizer we are not using 00 here 
zero zero is only required when you are saying okay i don't want to use division let it be zero zero itself okay. in our case we are saying we want the fertilizers and sanitizers to be available in each and every sales order correct so my question was ki if i do not want to use the division okay so do i need to maintain zero zero for both the uh, our, uh, fertilizer or, uh, and sanitizer or i do not want to need to maintain we we have to maintain with zero one that's all all the products will send through division one only something like that as we right. as we know like these three are mandatory for the sales organization i mean sales area okay no mm. akshay i still need to understand your see see and then we what we did for r1 fertilizer r2 sanitizer okay so when we go for the sales area it will be a sales of distribution division division will be r1 or r2 okay if i want to use cross cross division okay if zero zero so for that in the new entry i need to maintain zero zero uh r uh, 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 fertilizer and zero zero uh, sanitizer or it will be like no need to maintain anything it will take by default the cross functional it will take by default okay. no, no no vikram like uh, sorry to interrupt uh, what mr mm -hmm. akshay is asking is is we is saying like i am selling both sanitizers and fertilizers but both mm -hmm. sanitizers and fertilizers are being sold in one single division whether in even in that case should i create a division or not is it correct okay uh, i have not seen the requirement sales order r1 and r2 are there i am not saying that they are not different i am saying if i want to uh, sell via cross division means they both divisions are there but i want to sell it as a 0 0 i do not want to uh, differentiate them so is i need to maintain 0 0 separately or no need to maintain that's what i was asking No, but actually, my question: If you maintain zero zero, let's say you are saying, in addition to R one and R two, I want the user the option that zero zero also can be entered at the time of sales order, right? Correct. Right. But in that case, how will you get the report at the month end, at the year end, whenever you want to generate a report? If a user has not, see some orders he has entered R one correctly, some orders he has entered R two correctly. in some of the orders he has written 0 0 so you are not getting the complete report right r1 and r2 are in incomplete so if i am not worried about reports i can we do that that's what i am ah definitely definitely but that will not make see ultimately actually whatever we are doing we are doing mainly to generate the reports if if we are not bothered about reports we can just use 0 0 no problem but pcc most of the divisions are like 0 0 only we use I did not uh, see. Yes, yes. Actually, the reason is many customers. They, in in our example, we are able to see the divisions, but many customers what they do is they have some other dimensions to capture those requirements. Maybe they are using COPA. Maybe the material is already assigned to a particular field like sales group, right? And that is the reason they are already getting this information. Whether this is a fertilizer or a sanitizer, material itself. that is the reason they say okay why additionally we should have the division let's keep it 0 0 itself so it is ultimately the design whether you want to capture this information from the material master or you want to capture this information from the division field okay so that means whenever i am creating a sales order i need to have the knowledge which uh, uh, the product i am uh, about to order is uh, falls under which uh, division correct it's uh, is it exactly. under sanitizer or fertilizer okay right then only you will report will be dependent on division or your reports if you don't enter it properly then you will not get your report so half of the information is entered half of the information is not entered so it will definitely desired report and that there is no point in unnecessarily creating data to them generally we are not worried about which uh, division it falls under we just uh, enter 0 0 and <laughs> do our sales work so that's why i was asking okay thank you no that is akshay as i told you now maybe in some of the customer scenario they are not using division properly but ultimately if you want to use them then you definitely need to provide the correct information they not only it will make sense correct yeah 
okay so division is assigned let's create a sales area see looking at the sales area itself you will be getting the complete information okay this is from this sales department through website and we sold sanitizers okay no need to see the material also you are getting that level of information from here itself but if you still want that okay this information will not be captured at division level or maybe as you said if a customer says my order may have sanitizers my order may have fertilizers at the same time so in that case i'll not be dependent on division i want to dependent on the material in that case definitely there is no other option you have to go for zero zero only because this requires a discipline if you are not entering it properly if you, more transactions are zero zero then definitely that output that you were looking for will not appear so distribution channel zero two and i'll say division r1 say this is my rech distribution channel zero two and okay so as of now i'm just assigning mobile application related but later on definitely if i want to sell from website i also need to enter those details very clearly here in the sales area okay then you have sales office to sales area so which sales office can be used in conjunction with the sales area okay so new entry if i say my sales organization is rech sorry okay distribution channel is 02 division is r1 and sales office right you are not this can it? be served from this particular sales office which is okay rech created sales office and sales group created na no? okay so this sales office yeah. can use this sales area in short if this combination is not there then system will not allow you to enter that sales office at all it will tell you that it is not assigned same way goes for sales group also So if you go to new entries, sales office R E C, sorry R E C H, sales group is R E C. Okay, so within the sales office, you have different sales groups. Okay, we have seen the structure in the PPT. Within one sales office, we can have multiple sales groups. This one. So these are sales group which are assigned to the sales offices, and sales offices are assigned to the sales area. that is exactly what we have done okay this last level we will see later on it is not part of the enterprise structure you can assign the sales group to the sales person but that is something which needs to be done separately okay so next one is assign the sales organization distribution channel to plant if you don't do this then system will not allow you to use that particular plant for the sales organization so new entry again rech is my sales org my distribution channel is 02 and i want to assign plant rc01 okay so if rc02 is not assigned here which means i will not be able to use rc02 with this particular sales organization okay i think that completed the definition and assignment of objects related to sales so at least i hope you understood these basic points in today's session first of all in fi we need to create a company code and business area business area is normally assigned to plant we are not done maybe in the next session tomorrow session we will try to assign our business areas to plant so that as soon as the plant is entered in the transaction system will automatically determine the business area we discussed about storage locations purchasing organization we understood and created purchasing group we will create tomorrow okay and as the part we have seen the sales organization distribution channel division sales office and sales group we also understood what is the purpose of pr how the data will move from development to quality to production so whenever you do any configuration system creates the recording which is called as cr or tr tr stands for customizing request tr stands for transport request and once the configuration is saved if you want that same configuration to appear in quality you will ask your basis team 
to move that TR from development to quality and later on from quality to production. That is called as transport mechanism, transportation management. Okay. So what is the difference between CR and TR? Means they are one and the same thing or different? One and the same thing, different terminologies which we use. CR stands for customizing request, but many times we call it as a TR, which is transport request. Uh -huh. Uh, Mr. Vikram, you'll be saving this uh, text document as well as the PPT? Yes, yes, yes. I'll be sharing this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, we will be requiring our access. access. Yeah, access, access, uh, access given to you from tomorrow. Okay. So uh, yeah, I can arrange, uh, but today we have not covered much. So unnecessarily, there will be one day. Uh, delay maybe tomorrow we'll be losing a day uh, there is one uh, kind of suggestion i don't know if any of the followers is not see if we uh, i don't know work in silos that uh, i do not want to uh, look at the business uh, means use any of the company code and uh, plants and uh, so if we form a team that one guy from fi one guy from mm and sd so it will be like uh, we will be having a, like a kind of pro projects. I mean, so that's what I was looking for. If we do a team, then it will be a like uh, like a real scenario for us. Uh, problem. You can even the finance guys. They not ask for the cross module, but they said they want to do the finance activities together. So what I'll do is whatever uh, participants are there in this call. Let's so I will give it to you. Okay, you. I'll send the mail of all of them. You can communicate internally. Even I am not involved in the CC. That is up to you. How you want to practice. Okay, but later on, definitely I'll be giving you the project which you need to. Mails will be very uh, slow communication. If we uh, enable the chat group, uh, we can uh, use that as a option. Whoever is interested in uh, doing the. Yeah, even that is possible. I will arrange maybe the WhatsApp group which I already created. Uh, mm -hmm. But what if if I want to remove from it? So will it allow? Or maybe there has to be someone who will be taking care as a uh, admin because unnecessarily I don't want to keep on getting the message. If that is you can come from your room. Team group may not be good, Mr. Ikram, because we may miss the important messages from you. So we can okay. have a different group. We can have an additional group. And exactly, like that is the same uh, thing. Uh, like minded can join there. And different group that will be uh, because uh, we don't want to uh, interfere in others' team. Because I, if I get a team Sorry. of three, so it will so be I like think, my uh, So it is so better to communicate not... by mail actually because. Uh, other things no, also no, be no. communicative. Yeah, let's let's I, I don't want to go into that. Whatever way you feel confident, I don't have any problem. So I think you already got all the numbers, right? In the WhatsApp group. Yes, 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 correct. Yeah, so, so we can some... uh, uh, yeah, so, but we don't believe FI and SD, sir. <laughs> That's right. Right. No, no, no. I got the uh, I clarified even in this batch also and FI batch also. They are fine if I share the numbers. You already got the numbers. Maybe you, some of you can take the responsibility to create a WhatsApp group internally. And even email IDs I'll share with you. It is all up to you. See, I don't want to come into the picture. Whenever I'll be giving you the project, then definitely I'll be asking you as a team. But as of now, if you want to communicate with each other, I don't have any problem at all. The way you want to communicate, it is up to you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then thank you all. So we will meet tomorrow and we will try to complete this enterprise structure and if possible, we will try to see some master data. Thanks. Uh, like, okay. Uh, okay. Can you send it today's uh, by end of day today itself so that we can once go through these. Uh, I'll uh, try. I'll okay. definitely try. Thank you. Thank you. Vikram, uh, you, you might have to address my issue, not able to play these slides. Ah, okay. So, 
Uh, Raj, can you just uh, ping me on the WhatsApp? We will try to see using the team viewer. Okay. okay. Okay, I'll ping you and I have already sent an email attaching the screenshot of what's the error, but I'll ping you later. No problem. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you.